All right, thank you. Thank you. What a rousing way to start a concert. Never can lose with American Salute. That's such an interesting tune in that uh, I was telling the students that there was a point where he had written that, you know, amongst so many other things, and he had literally forgotten that he wrote it. And it wasn't until about 10 years in the 1950s that all of a sudden he heard it somewhere, and he's like, I think I wrote that. And they found out that he wrote it, and then it became, you know, a huge piece for him. It literally is his mo most well-known piece, so that's a great piece. Uh, this whole concert, if you haven't figured out, is kind of our artistic response to what's been going on in the world in the past two years with the pandemic and the wars and the Black Lives Matter movement and all these important things that we've been going through. And I thought we need to just kind of take a moment and, and reflect on all of these times. And so our next piece, of course, is one of those pieces, a movement for Rosa, about Rosa Parks. And it's a, a very um, enlightening, disturbing, um, glorious piece. So we're sure you're gonna enjoy this and hope you will get the understanding of this piece, Movement for Rosa by Mark Camphouse.
right. Let's give him another hand. That was a very difficult beat. Yes. Fun. Great. So wow. All right. So um, sometimes I'm not sure what I'm thinking. And I was pondering this weekend, and many of you know that on set Friday night, we had a an hour and a half jazz band gig that, mo that uh, all of them are here today. And then yesterday we had a small ensemble, chamber ensemble concert over at Lions Club. And then today, it, while it's a lot of fun to do it all at once, it's, it's really taxing on these people. And I really appreciate all of their hard work. And I just realized I hadn't heard anybody complain about it. Wow, that's really nice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it has been, it's been a, a very wonderful weekend. We've had a great time this weekend, and I really appreciate all their hard work and great music that they made. And, and so, um, for those of you who weren't able to make it to our chamber ensemble concert yesterday, I thought we'd just give you a little taste of what it was, and I say a little taste. So, oh, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Flute ensemble, go, go, ready. I thought they were already moving, yeah, they just went, boom. even the best laid plans. And uh, so anyways, we're gonna have uh, each one of them do one number, and we're gonna start off with our flute ensemble, Claire Copeland, Mackenzie Henson, Hanson, Victoria Lawbaugh, and Rachel Zhu, doing Allegretto from uh, Hook's Trio number two.
was thinking that that is the only non-American piece that we have on our program today, but it works perfectly because, of course, before the 20th century, there was no real American music, and so this is what everyone would have been listening to at the turn of the 20th century, or the 19th century, or the 20th century, that's right. Um, so then we're going to go over to our brass quintet of Hunter Gibson, Jesse Dobson, Jonathan Dacus, Eugenie Salvant, and Wilson Hooker to do a very American piece by Erica Wazen called The Grand Valley Fanfare.
that any of our composition majors in the ensemble write a piece for us. And so, uh, of course, I approached our composition in residence, Mr. Brian Thaxton, and he said, oh yes, I'd love to do it. And so he wrote this uh, a few months ago. Oh, excuse me. And as you can read in the program notes, it's his reaction to what all has been going on the last two years. Uh, so you'll also not be surprised. Uh, let's have Brian stand up so you can just know who he is. Brian, right there. That's right. Give him a hand. That any good composer will write lots of solos for himself. And so we're going to hear a lot of great tuba music too, besides everything else. So make sure you listen to that. This is Brian Thaxton's May You Live.
who have never done that, that is quite a feat to write an entire game. Yes, yeah, thank you, go. Um, and so, yes. Right now, before, while the other two groups are getting in, in place, uh, I'd like to announce our graduating seniors this year. We have a very important group of graduating seniors this year, and we're going to start at the bottom, I guess, with our own Mr. Brian Jackson. Brian, all right. <laughs> Also in the percussion section, we have Miss Michaela Laird. In the trombone section, Mr. Matthew Knight. Also in the trombone section, Mr. Christopher Scott. Making sure here, and we're gonna go to the very top. Sure, I'm not missing anybody. Miss Mackenzie Hansen. All right. Okay. Thank you. And you see that our seniors have been scattered throughout our ensemble, which is good, except for our last three seniors, which are Miss Caitlin Anderson in the clarinet section. Miss Breslin Dillon, also in the clarinet section. Miss Mary Schneider, also in the clarinet section. As you can see, our clarinets decided they needed to graduate this year. <laughs> we are so grateful for all of these seniors. They've all been such stalwart uh, members of our ensembles, most of them, almost all of them, for all four years that they were here, and in one case, five years. And uh, so we're, we're so grateful that they were here with us and have. Uh, been such a big part of our organization. Now our last two ensembles we're going to do are both kind of American popular tunes. Uh, the first one is going to be a Swanee. How could we have an American concert without some George Gershwin? Holy mackerel. So we have some Swanee of Claire Copeland, R Grace Rogers, and Madeline Buer. And then following that we're going to have the Mississippi Rag, which is interestingly um, one of, if not the first ragtime piece ever published. And this is by our saxophones, Nash Uto, Abigail Viedmark, and Trevor Thomas. So enjoy some American popular music.
All right. I, uh, it occurred to me that I forgot one name off of my senior list. Of course, I would do that. But uh, this member has been in our ensemble for four years, even though they weren't able to be in it this semester. And she's in the audience, I saw her, and so Miss Caitlin McCormick's graduating this year. Yes, yeah, all right. One of those science things where she had to have a class at the same time as ensemble, and so she couldn't be in it. Uh, okay, so our final piece for today, and again, uh, we're so glad that you all could be here to share in this wonderful music at the end of this challenging yet wonderful year. And we certainly hope our years in the future are a bit easier than this end. As Bryant's uh, program note said, that, that Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times, is certainly right in the front of my mind all the time right now, and I certainly hope we can live in a little bit less interesting times in a little bit. But uh, we, we end this program with such a hopeful, exciting American piece, the uh, Aaron Copeland's uh, Lincoln Portrait. Yes, I want to say Copeland Portrait, and Lincoln Portrait. And this is one of his most favorite, famous pieces. Uh, you know of probably his other famous pieces like Fanfare for the Common Man, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but this is one of his big pieces, and we've been so lucky to be able to do this this semester. And we're also so lucky to have our own Dr. Cliff Fortenberry, who will be our narrator. So let us welcome our own Dr. Cliff Fortenberry. <laughs>
this is what he said. This is what Abe Lincoln said. Shall happen. 